a lot of businesses done out on the golf course, but for me, this is my golf course. Gillian's really into the detail, and I'm really into the deal. I think that would be fair to say. I think that's very fair to say. What we're trying to do is take our models and make them so photorealistic that it's just like a real human being there, living. I don't spend weekends with kids with special needs, and I, that's not something I do, and I'm not professing to have a halo or wings, but we're really, really focused on what's right for the kids. The EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award celebrates the entrepreneurial spirit. 24 finalists are chosen from Ireland, North and South. Their stories epitomise the pioneering spirit of our best business leaders. And in five weeks' time, one of them will be chosen to represent Ireland as EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016. Niall Stringer and Gillian Maxwell are the husband and wife team behind Tiger Store's arrival on Irish streets. From a needle to an anchor, you can probably find what you're looking for in one of their 25 stores, north and south. It's important as retailers to entertain the customer and to give them an opportunity to really explore the store as they walk around. So as you can see from the store, there's a maze structure that allows them to uh, see new things every time they turn. And, 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 and as you know, we feel it's really important to have good lighting, good uh, displays, uh, the products presented in a really eye-catching and beautiful way. I suppose our products are relatively low cost, but what we're trying to make is a high value shopping environment for our customers. Tiger has a presence in 28 countries worldwide, but it was in London that Gillian and Niall encountered the shops and they knew a good thing when they saw it. They just had to convince the Danish company that they should be the ones to introduce Irish people to the quirky world of Tiger. We discovered Tiger in London. It was raining. Gillian needed an umbrella and we stumbled across this shop called Tiger and contacted the guys in Denmark. We visited them, they came to Ireland and visited us and we sort of took it from there. We contacted them that night in the airport. We were, I mean, I went mad and purchased enough to blow my Ryanair baggage allowance coming home, but we just both felt this was something special and, and, and you know, not, we knew it was the one from that moment. We just felt this was not a store we'd seen anything like in Ireland and this was something for us. My, my father's always run businesses and I was working in Trinity as a deputy recruitment manager and so we, I said, yeah, I think I'm going to take a career break and go and we're going to run a retail business and I think my mum probably only recently forgave me for it. She thought we were barking. Uh, I think maybe at about shop 10 she started to really relax a little bit more. Away from the shop floor, Lieutenant Stringer's experiences with a much larger organisation have been invaluable. In the Reserve Defence Forces, the leadership skills he uses are on an entirely different scale from anything he's experienced before. What we've got on today is a potential NCOs course. The aim of today is to simulate a aerial bombardment of their positions uh, while they come under fire. So there'll be a lot of gunfire and uh, loud bangs. Before coming into the Army Reserve, we had a small company, so we saw things on a smaller scale. Whereas when you're working in a big organisation, you can see how the organisation is structured and how they manage people and manage logistics. And that was a great benefit for me to just get an understanding of the steps needed to expand my business. We definitely had a very successful day, um, but I think from my point of view, you know, it's nice to be out of the office. Money couldn't buy this type of lifestyle uh, from a reservist point of view. The rapid success of Tiger since 2011, growing from one to 25 stores and employing 250, requires the couple to organise the workload very efficiently. We are quite complimentary. Gillian's really into uh, the detail um, and I'm really into the deal. So I get the deal done and then a lot of it follows behind uh, after that. But uh, I think that would be fair to say. I think that's very fair to say. <laughs> Part of the core of being an entrepreneur is managing risk. And uh, I think Niall has, we're, we're very yin and yang. I would be naturally risk adverse, whereas he is 
completely embraces risk. We sort of I temper that craziness and he pushes that safety in me. It's one of the advantages of working with my husband. You know, there's this fear of the risk, but I trust him implicitly. So, you know, he's never done, done us too far wrong for to date. The most important thing is to divide it up to make sure there's two clear job descriptions that we're not sort of overlapping each other. It's very difficult, but it's... it's uh, I noticed he looked at me there. Yeah, it's... <laughs> um, we've managed it so far. Hi, ladies, how are you? I feel huge pride in what we've done, but the moments of most pride are where you're walking along and you see somebody with the Tiger product. So, you know, we were on the boat recently and there was a woman sitting beside us with Tiger colouring books and brought out a Tiger uh, cool bag. And that's where you kind of go, we did that. And that's, that's a cool moment. Everyday activities can be huge stumbling blocks when you have special needs. Changing all that is Lecky, a Lisburn-based designer and manufacturer of mobility aids. The business, with a turnover of over £16 million, blossomed, while James Lecky was studying engineering and working in his parents' florist shop. I, I really enjoyed it. I love the design side of it. And I, I tell people I was the 1982 All-Ireland Junior Interflora Flower Ranging Champion. Something quite proud of, actually. There we go. And that typically is a hand tied bouquet. It's hard work. It's hard work. It, it's creative. I love actually dealing with customers. If you want to get customer service, deal with the bride about her wedding bouquet. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> it's pretty clear. That's customer service. They get what they want. James always had the inventing bug. When he decided his engineering brain could help him do more for the clients of a local charity than simply raise money, he was inspired to create his first product, a seating system. It started literally in a shed at the family home. I worked alone for the first two years developing products. I, I knew early on that I had to develop products, otherwise it was going to be a service I was providing and that wasn't scalable. I developed a number of seating systems for the kids and started producing those. I knew it was something that would be really fulfilled following and I would pursue. And I, I got a sense that everything had gone prior to that it actually took me to that moment and said, that's what you need to do, because it really does work. So I saw a career straight away. It was really, yeah, it was very, it was almost instant, I saw it. Clients for Leckie's postural aids include the NHS, an upstart spin-off company Firefly, focuses on consumer products that help families get out and go do, Firefly's Keystone products are the Upsea walking vest and the go-to support seat. Just having dinner at Granny and Granda's house, you know, we weren't able to get Daniel's wheelchair into their house, so he was really just always sat on the floor, and then with the go-to seat, we were able to attach it to a dining room and have Sunday dinner, and that was the f a, a first, you know, and um, Daniel's Granny was just, she was delighted at this, and we take the go-to seat with us pretty much everywhere, and it just gives Daniel the opportunity to really be involved and um, really active in everything that we're doing. Basically, the up is very easy. It's just a harness, like a jacket, so we put it on like a normal jacket, click it, click it on. I would sit down and put the belt on and the feet and just attach it to me. It's very easy, which makes it good and simple. She loves being upright and walking, and this enables her to do that. It's the really simple things that we all take for granted, you know, it just makes it possible for special needs families and, and it's only whenever, you know, it's the opportunity to do the things is taken away from you and you get that back, you realise just how important the simple things in life really are. It was one of the kids we were working with and she got the opposite for the first time and we asked her, we, we, we asked the parents, what do you think she'll want from this, what would she, what would she get from it? And um, this, maybe you shouldn't use this one, it always catches me. We thought she'd want to go out, in the, you know, out to the rock pools or go on the beach or do this stuff, um, but she wanted to see what was outside her bedroom window. She couldn't see from her wheelchair. So I thought that was class. <laughs> We're in an industry where it is challenging to talk about profits. Profits are absolutely essential. I want to pay for things, pay wages, pay for research and development, grow the company. But we're really, really focused on what's right for the kids. And I explain to people that I'm, I'm not a, you know, I, I do have some altruistic um, goals now, but for, for many years I didn't. Um, and I don't spend weekends with kids with special needs and I, that's not something I do and I'm not professing to have a halo or wings but I know commercially that the more we do to support kids with special needs and be absolutely focused on that and make sure everybody in the business is focused on that, the better we do commercially as well.
James doesn't confine himself to growing just the business, however. His colourful career dovetails perfectly with downtime at home. We have four alpacas. There's Flanagan, and there's Mrs. Hall, or Anne, if you know her particularly well. Then there's uh, George and Mildred. Now, Mildred's expecting at the moment as well, due in about a month's time. They're a bit strange, they are a bit strange, but they kind of fit in very, very well. <laughs> They're not lost. <laughs> well, I'm an engineer uh, and also a, a designer, so I like the design and I like to change things. So getting out here at the weekends and just shaping and changing and doing stuff is really what I enjoy the most. It's, it's brilliant to see all the people and see the work we've done and the good it's done. That's hugely heartwarming. Um, but uh, I've probably got more than I've given in terms of a career. Each year, the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award celebrates entrepreneurial spirit, those adventurous souls who get up, go out and change the world. I would strongly encourage anybody who has a flair for business, who has a desire to tackle you know, difficult challenges, who's got ideas that they really want to bring to life, I would absolutely encourage them to follow that path. I think maybe in the past Ireland wasn't necessarily such a conducive environment to do that, but I think that landscape has changed dramatically over the last 10, 15 years. And there's lots of really strong examples and role models for people now of people who actually have done that. They've followed their dreams, they've kind of taken ideas that might look a little bit crazy, actually, but follow them through, build really good businesses around them and are very much fulfilled as a consequence of that. There are many reasons why you could consider the entrepreneurial road rather than another path in life. Here are just five of them. Do something you love. If you don't love what you do, it's gonna be a really long and difficult journey. So find something that you really, really love and work at it, work hard. It's all about working hard, but you know what? The rewards are fantastic. It is hard being an entrepreneur, but that passion fuels that desire and that energy to get up every single day and to make a difference. So passion, it's, it's the fuel of entrepreneurism. Because whatever it is that's keeping you awake at night, you've just got to get out there and fix it. So first and foremost, I'm a doc. And I suppose at the heart of all of that, that's a vocation. We never set about to try and build a business. We just grew a pretty wonderful practice, which became an enterprise. And in so doing, we impacted a lot of lives around the world, around the clock, in a way that we'd never ever dreamed of doing. So if there is something eating you at night, something that's just stopping you going to sleep, and it's just deep, deep within you, just go out and have a pop at it. Have a real, real crack at it. Get out there and fix it. You get to choose the people you work with. The great advantage of working with people that you know and respect and like is really the shared taste you have for doing projects. I mean, we all want to do the same kind of projects. And also, you can be very honest with each other creatively, and that helps build great teams and improves projects and makes them better. Have control over your destiny. If someone is starting a new business, it's absolutely important to be different. You know, we've had to go not 30% better or even twice as good, but 10 times or, or more. In order to do that, you really have to take a different approach. And one final reason, you could be here at the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards in October, celebrating your success and nominated alongside your peers. The best of the best are honoured each year in a glittering award ceremony. From 24 nominees, one will follow in the footsteps of last year's overall winner, the Collisons of Stripe. College dropout John Moore is CEO of 3D4 Medical, the world's most successful developer of mobile and desktop medical applications. Winner of an Apple Design Award, 3D4 Medical software solutions have utterly transformed the way medical students learn about the human anatomy. The company is headquartered in Dublin. John lives in the heart of the fair city with his wife, who's an actress, and his two sons. This is Michael, my youngest, who's eight. Yeah. No, I'm almost nine. Almost nine years of age. This is John, who's 16, Hi. almost 17. And this is my wife, Tanya. <laughs> I met Tanya in a, in a bar 18 years ago. Love at first sight, and uh, sparks flew. Uh, they've been sparking ever since. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we met on Dawson Street in Cafe and Sin, uh, and I looked at John, and I loved him. 
No, actually, <laughs> completely wrong. He you know. loved her, and then she had no interest in no interest. In Thanks for that, Michael. The company's technology disrupts traditional methods of teaching medicine, which hasn't changed in decades. The 3D applications render highly accurate and realistic representations of the human body, which can be manipulated from all angles. With 12 million users worldwide now, the early champions of the software were tech-savvy students. If you think about the way people are taught in medical anatomy, and when I say medical anatomy, anybody in those professions from people becoming doctors, physiotherapists, chiropractitioners, or even nurses, they all have to learn anatomy. And they've been using these books that are 75 years old, 100 years old, like Gray's Anatomy and, and, and Netter, and they're flat. They're just one dimension. You look at it from the front, or you look at it from the back, or you look at it from the side. And what we've created is technology, this platform, this 3D engine that allows us to render in real time so you can zoom into a cadaver. And that cadaver is medically accurate and photorealistic. And you can dissect, you can cut through, you can perform virtual operations. It brings it to a completely different level. You can even simulate disease states. And if I go to my cut tool and I do a cut in the back of the skull, and I cut through the first layer of bone and then through the derma, and through the next layer, I have now just relieved the fluid. When we originally started, we were infiltrating from the ground up in th through the students. The professors were ignoring us because they liked to teach the way they taught for 75, 100 years. But now our new technology and our new breed of products is infiltrating from the top down. So the universities and the professors are actually recommending, instead of the books, this new way of learning, this new 3D technology. So there's a real disruption happening right now. In the consulting room, 3D4 Medical's applications can be used to explain procedures, help with joint decision-making between patients and doctors, and allows patients to bring home illustrations to examine while they decide on their own care options. But the possibilities of the technology are even more exciting. The future is really interesting in our particular sector because with the advent of AR, augmented reality and virtual reality and actually mixed reality, what we're trying to do is take our models and make them so photorealistic that it's just like a real human being there, living, like a living creature, the heart beating, the lungs breathing, and the ability to dissect it virtually. But we're also going to be able to take MRI data, specifically from a patient, and be able to morph that or have our models morph to that MRI data so that the operations, the virtual operations that you're doing in this living creature are actually you. And that allows the doctor to practice or to be able to do that virtual operation before he lays a finger on you. Freshly Chopped provides fast food that's good for you at 13 locations around Dublin and counting. With the brand growing strongly since the first store opened in 2012, Brian Lee is in training for even more success. And to take his mind off building his food empire, he's also in training in mixed martial arts. So the, every uh, Tuesday and Thursday, we sit out and Chris to do a technical session. So we're just warming up here now on the pads before we start into some grappling. For me, it's the new golf course because I've already secured two franchises that I've never met before until I walked into the gym. A lot of business is done out on the golf course, but for me, this is my golf course with a lot of good connections and uh, friends I met. He's very driven. Um... <laughs> Yeah, some might say egotistical, some might say driven, but uh, it kind of it works for what we do, and it works for business too. So we like he ha he he wants to win, even though it's just like a, a grappling match, and a man he wants to win. Like, but at the same side, willing to learn from people like me. So, chopped is a healthy food concept. We're making fast food healthy and healthy food fast. From my love and passion from fitness, from since the age of 15, going to the gym and not finding anywhere that I can eat to complement my own training. That was the, where the spark came from, to create healthy fast food. Before we actually decided on a location or actually what we were going to do, we decided to create a brand. 
a brand that people are going to identify and want to be associated with. So they're going to do your marketing for you. They're going to want to take pictures of your product and put it on social media. They won't take a picture of their hot dog and put it up and say, look what I've eaten for my lunch. We rather run out than throw out, so we'll never throw anything in the bin. Our waste is just below 1% in each store. To feed his global ambitions for the business, Brian will need to ensure each new store faithfully reflects the polished brand he has developed for Chopped. As a new store in Blanchardstown is prepped for opening, he drops in to cast a watchful eye on every detail. We're on schedule, yeah. I think we're, we're getting there nicely. The lads are going to work all weekend, I heard, so well impressed. Well, my background, I was a carpenter by trade with my father's shop fitting business, so it was very easy for me to project manage the shop fit outs for Chopped. It's, uh, it comes a natural and I'm very uh, critical when it comes to detail on the fit outs and uh, nothing gets past me. Ah, yeah, he's on top of everything now, I have to say. Doesn't miss a trick. It's quite complex in, in the sort of time frame that we have. But. When George started here, now he, he, he didn't have any grey hairs now, so just coming to the end of the job now where, where he's changed the colour here. So we want our standards to be the same across all the shops. So we, if, if you walk into this shop, you're going to think it's the exact same as the other shop. So that's it. All the, all the standards and finishing and quality needs to be the same. The gym is Brian's oasis of calm and it's been pivotal in his personal life too. Here he met his partner Sinead, who is herself a kickboxing world champion. The couple are expecting their first child this year. I'll be very competitive in my everyday life and sports, and personal life, where you probably wouldn't want to be. Uh, I think it's just a natural thing. Uh, it, it, it competitiveness is in you, and that's why myself and Sinead get on so great as well. We're both into training and we're both very competitive. Um, we start training together, so we had that connection, um, and we kind of just bonded through training together. It's good for his mind to be trained as well. Uh, I think it kind of takes a bit of stress off him from, from all the businesses and stuff, you know. Today, Brian takes delivery of the 10th store in his own brand. Cahal Pendred, retired UFC fighter, is on hand at the grand opening, where he'll also be getting into the chopped business. It feels amazing. This is our, our number 10, our 10th store, and then this is uh, our biggest one as well, with 52 seats. So I'm looking at it now. We might be able to get another table or two here and bring that up to 55. It's a huge uh, achievement and a very proud moment now to be opening a new store. 10 now and we plan on having another 10 open by the end of October. We want to bring this to an international uh, brand. We want to take on the likes of McDonald's one day because if you have a McDonald's everywhere there's no reason why you can't have a chop beside it because if everybody's willing to eat unhealthy I believe people are willing to eat healthy as well. Next week making dream kitchens come true. The global ingredients giant with a rebel heart. Mapping real estate that's six feet under, the Navin man who gives plenty credit, and technology to prevent injury and keep athletes in the game.